Luce della Vite story is about wine at its best. It's a narrative about families, culture, sharing ideas, and most of all, it's a story about place and time. This year, Luce celebrates its 25th anniversary. We take a look at the Montalcino Super Tuscan with Lamberto Frescobaldi, the 30th generation winemaker and president of Marchese Frescobaldi, a family wine business making Tuscan wine for over 700 years. Welcome, how are you? I'm doing very good. Thank you, Anthony. Lovely to, to see you. Why don't we talk a little bit about uh, how this whole project came together? At the age of 56, Bob Mondavi began his winery, Robert Mondavi. And then uh, the success of the Mondavis was terrific, and uh, you know it better than I do. And then what happened? They wanted to come back to Italy. They wanted to come back to Italy, but with a partner. Because uh, they, they understood, they knew, they knew that managing vineyards, you have to have somebody on site. You have somebody that you trust. At the time, Super Tuscans were popular. Was that the goal or was it just going to be a blend? And why was it Merlot uh, that was put with Sangiovese? It, it happened that uh, in Montalcino, we were producing a 100% a, a Merlot called La Maione. And uh, Tim Mondavi happened to taste this wine and said, who is the guy that produces this wine? And so we got <laughs> together, the, the area of Montalcino where we have our state is called Castello Condo. The Merlot was planted in 1976 by the previous owner, was a French company. And, uh, and the Merlot there was, uh, was uh, complex, but severe uh, at the same time with a long finish but with that, with that uh, touch of Tuscany and a touch of Montalcino. So it was, is a Merlot with character. And then the Sangiovese. Sangiovese in Montalcino is the uh, mother and father and grandfather and grandmother of the uh, Brunello. And there uh, we, we decided to do something uh, as a blend that was totally different from what we were doing. After a few days, uh, we decided to do this uh, project together. Uh, we bought some land, they came for sale. Um, and then after a few years, more land. And here we go, more land, because we wanted that Luce had his own land and to be independent. After eight years of a fairy tale partnership with the Robert Mondavi family, the joint venture took a dramatic turn in 2004 when the Napa Valley Winery was bought by the multinational wine giant Constellation Brands. We had an agreement that who of the two families would have lost the control of the mother family, that could have bought back at a fixed price, and that was, is what we did. Uh, Constellation, we could have remained together with Constellation. Constellation uh, uh, is definitely a company that one could, could be a dream to work with them, uh, yet we believed it was a little bit too big. Uh, uh, and we were coming from this really terrific family style of, of getting together. And when we began, we did a joint venture 50-50. And I must say that that was very nice of them. They were, they were 20 times bigger than us uh, in terms of turnover. But they were very, very, uh, I must say, for me, for me and my family, but I'm talking now for me, Lamberto, working together with Tim Mondavi, with Michael Mondavi, has been the most amazing, terrific experience in my life. Mm. Beautiful people, really, uh, really beyond what I would have ever thought. Very, very, we say amicavoli. Amicavoli means very friendly, um, very down to earth. They never, never imposed anything to them, even though they, they could have had the power. So we had the most terrific, I think, relationship together. And, and I really missed this uh, when we finished. When the wine was launched, it it was was it supposed to be a wine for America, and yet it went in a different direction? Can you explain how that was accepted around the world? The wine came out and was quite a prize, was quite 
important rights for at least for us. And so initially was said, ah, okay, the Mondavi are big, uh, very, very organized in, on, on the marketing and on sales. In US, this wine would is going to go 60, 70% in US. And the result was exactly quite the opposite. 20% uh, US, uh, very strong in Italy, that we would have never thought about that. Um, mm. Extremely successful in, in Japan. Japan is often uh, the second biggest market after Italy. Um, and, uh, and then Canada has grown, Russia, uh, Asia, and nowadays uh, China. Um, so this wine has really became, uh, has be became an international uh, wine, uh, although the first market is Italy. And this, we are very proud of that. Lumberto, let's talk a little bit about the, the 25th anniversary bottle, the, the 2017 yeah. Luce. You've been there from the start, obviously. If, if you were to talk to collectors or buyers today, are there been any any big changes or just subtle changes? How would you characterize Luce over the 25 years and what's going in the bottle today, say, versus the first few years? The blend has always been very, very much uh, similar. We began with a 50-50% blend. There are some years that there is a little bit more Merlot, some years that there is a little bit more Sangiovese, a little bit depending from the quality of the two varieties. What we have done, I think, over the years, we've become a little bit more careful on, on vineyard management. We have rolled or replanted some vineyards over, over the time with high density. Now we have an optical sorting table, barrels, have been uh, of some companies or other companies really to respect the wine maximum and um, but we have kept a line so this wine is uh, is made and craft in Montalcino the vintage are in Montalcino so Montalcino has to have its role in this wine mm. and uh, and the wine is ages very well so one can also enjoy all the vintages with great pleasure. I feel there's there's more purity and, and much more finesse uh, today, perhaps, than earlier on. Like it was a big wine. Now it's a wine of finesse and, and uh, persistence and balance. So I, I just love the direction it's in. I'm curious in the beginning, because you, you've mentioned Montalcino many times. You did not make a Brunello. Tell us a bit about the why you went to Brunello now. So <clears throat> well, the agreement with the Mondavi was never to do something that was somewhat in competition with what the Frescobaldi were doing in Montalcino at the state of Castelgiocondo. The state of Castelgiocondo, uh, we were doing, uh, the Frescobaldi were doing uh, Brunello. So we said, okay, let's don't do uh, something with Luce uh, that is going to go against the Frescobaldi. Um, and that was uh, the, the case until the joint venture ended in uh, September '04. But we already vintage 2003. We understood that something was happening. So from the vineyards that we had with Luce uh, and the, the, uh, the company Luce, we had a vineyard of uh, Brunello. So um, we harvest uh, we harvest that uh, Sangiovese and kept it separate with the right paperwork and uh, saying, who knows, we will see what happens. Uh, as you know, Brunello has to age five years. So um, then in 2004, the joint venture ended. And in 2008, we did a small amount of Brunello because we wanted to reinforce the fact that Luce uh, is a wine produced in Montalcino. So we wanted to give a heritage, a, a birthplace stronger, because being uh, the appellation written Brunello di Montalcino, Montalcino cannot be written on the label of a IGT wine. How right. is, how, how, how Luce is. We had a chance to visit the property uh, a year or so ago. It's a spectacular uh, site. You've done a lot of renovations there. Uh, it's 
it's a it's a beautiful setting and it uh, it clearly is on its own i i like that so much uh, that luce now has an identity and a and a place to visit too to uh, taste the wine yeah. and experience that that singular sort of part of brunello yeah yeah it's exactly we uh, for many years as you point out we had to share uh, the cellar with uh, with castagiocondo and then um, we had uh, the chance to uh, to find this uh, site where a, a gentleman was uh, just initially building his his winery. Um, he is not from the wine business, so for him was uh, uh, was a so-called investment. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, uh, and, but he understood quite quickly that. This is this. It's it's not an easy job. You have to always. Uh, you, first of all, you have to understand what is quality in a wine. That is not only uh, writing a check and and and, and, and doing a post, maybe you think you, somebody's doing the wine for you. Uh, you, I think that one has to really understand what is going on in the cellar, the vineyards, and he understood that uh, this is a. Is a it's a different kind of job from what he had in mind, and um, and so I remember I went up to him and said, um, I, "I see that you you are, you want to you're doing a great wine, but are you ready to sell?" <laughs> and this guy said to me, "No, no. of course no. I'm glad to, to hear this." And then after a few, uh, and then I said to him, "Look, we I want to build a winery." Uh, I, I see that you are starting the project of the building a winery. Uh, it's a shame if you build a winery, I'm going to build also a winery in another place quite close to here. Uh, a lot of uh, concrete, a lot of uh, we really going to rape this lovely soil, this lovely location. Maybe if you change your mind, I'm not going to build my winery and I'm going to finish your, what you have just started. And, uh, and he said, no, no, I'm fine. After 10 days, he called me up and said, Mr. Vescobaldi, he was, he's from Switzerland. Mr. Vescobaldi, I'm not sleeping any longer. I said, oh, shoot, I'm sorry. What a, what a, no, since you offered, I'm starting to think about it. And so we, we, we talked about, about it for, I think, four or five months. And then yeah. finally, we got together. And, uh, and, um, and a funny, find, funny thing is that, uh, he, the keys of the cellar is, is the same key that opens also the front door of his house. And when he gave me the key, uh, he said to me, I'm not going to change the key of my home. You have to change the key of your cellar. And I said, <laughs> let's do a deal. I'm not going to change it. So you can come in whenever you want. You want. I'm not going to come at your that cellar. So at your home. And, uh, and he can come in. He never came, of course. Because he's very polite, but he could come in anytime he wants. Wow! So wine is about also the respect and friendship. What do you see happening the next quarter century? By the quarter century, if uh, if I would know perfectly, uh, give me the numbers, and I'm gonna play them at the lottery, and finally I'm gonna be a rich man. And uh, <laughs> but <laughs> we have uh, added a wine. It's called Lux, is a Cabernet Sauvignon and a touch of Sangiovese. Wow. Uh, we have done that uh, the first vintage in 2015, uh, and we presented that uh, only two years ago. I must say it's a small numbers yet. Uh, this is a vineyard that was planted with, uh, that I remember planted together with Timon Davi back in 2004. Uh, that in 2015 we believe that it was already was ready to 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 start producing wine to go to bottle and then what is going to be happening in the next 25 years uh, the bar has to always be raising so the bar goes always up there are some other opportunities i i hope to one day to meet uh, somebody uh, as Terrific, as marvelous as Tim and Michael Mondavi, and also I like to all remember Marsha, uh, the sister, and mm -hmm. then um, 
Bob and Margaret Mondavi, they're not with us any longer, but marvelous people that they made me, uh, I think, a different person. Uh, I never can be thankful enough to them. And I hope that I can find them for my kids or my nephews that they want to carry on this lovely, difficult business, job, uh, love, mm -hmm. passion that uh, allows you to be together with interesting people, brilliant people to do something uh, as lovely as, uh, as, as Luce mm -hmm. is and as Luce has been for me. Over the years, Lamberto's experience with Luce is clearly a positive one. But he didn't see the light initially when Margaret Mondavi came up with the moniker Luce. This sun comes from the altar, the church of Santo Spirito, uh, is uh, the Roman Catholic uh, meant uh, reunification. And funny enough, uh, was actually putting together two families, the Mondavis and my family. And, uh, and uh, so we decided to use the sun, but the name was not there yet. The mm -hmm. name is thanks to Margaret Mondavi, the wife of, of Bob Mondavi, that uh, she was a lovely lady, spoke uh, seven languages. And once in Montalcino, we were driving to Montalcino, a thunderstorm was, was, uh, was, in, was happening. And, and, the, and at a certain moment, the clouds, they opened up and, and, and a beam of light went through the, the, those clouds. And she said, Luce, we should call it Luce. And all of us said, Luce, come on, are you kidding? Is it it's terrible as a name? It's, uh, how can you translate that in English? Luce is light, but it's also not heavy. And so <laughs> we wanted to do a big, juicy red wine. Yeah. So we said, no, no, this name is the worst possible. And then, uh, and then, if it's not light, the people will read it as Lucy. So, <laughs> no, 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 no. Initially, no one of us could call this wine Luce. And after some time, Luce was. And, uh, and Luce has remained, and Luce is the name of this wine, and remembers the uh, ter terrific uh, light that uh, we have in, uh, in Tuscany that uh, embraces our vineyards south facing in Montalcino in this unique uh, soil where uh, Merlot and Sangiovese are able to be combined together to have the, uh, the backbone and the brightness of the Sangiovese and the warm hug from the Merlot. Well, Umberto, uh, we are so happy we could connect and taste these uh, new vintages and talk a little bit about the history of Luce, really one of uh, the world's iconic red wines now after 25 years. So congratulations on that. Ciao. Ciao.